activists with respect to this will encourage their neighbors to exactly. participate rather than That's simply true. stand mm -hmm. by and let them right. throw it away. I agree. That without that, uh, without a, a good turn, you know, return on this, we wouldn't pursue uh, an ordinance. Okay. okay. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks thank for coming you. in. Kenny, do you have anything? <coughs> uh, <coughs> I'll try not to take this. <laughs> you love golf. Yeah. <laughs> you guys um, just saw each other last night. Yeah. Yes. <coughs> uh, you got on a roll last night. <laughs> yeah. I, I just be slow enough a little bit. Uh, my name is Ken Simmons. Right there in front. Oh. Yeah. My name is Ken Simmons, and I'm a builder, developer for 35 years in the town of Elkton and other places. Um, <clears throat> at this point, I'm involved in um, uh, trying to annex into the town in a project called Tembe Ridge. And um, <clears throat> I have negotiated, uh, I have a letter here from the town of Elkton that says basically um, bring in a water source and, and um, we have the sewer and, you know, we can annex you into the town. And the original letter I writ, uh, written was that <clears throat> we would um, get water from uh, United Water. But in the meantime, uh, because of the contracts and things with the County Artesian has stepped in, and, and now they're they're negotiating with everybody. And um, um, I came here tonight basically to say I'm not sure what's good and what's bad. So I can only tell you what I know, so that um, on the workshop uh, everybody knows pretty much what they should be thinking or talking about. First, you know, Artesian, uh, I don't know all the things, but I have been invited to the workshop um, on, I forget, 4 o'clock or something. Artesian is going to be here. So, <clears throat> but what I've got to say here is I, I don't think uh, if the town of Elkton is, is planning on having to give up any authority, any regards to power that I'm going to say that has to do with water because Artesian is insisting, then in all fairness coming from me, I'm not so sure, and I never signed the contract with, Art, uh, with Artesian. Um, I refused to sign it until the town of Elton had read it and whatever. So, but then after that, then negotiations started <clears throat> for territories and whatever. Now, <clears throat> so tonight I show up with um, a very similar agreement that I also didn't sign uh, with United Water. Now, Artesian came to me when they learned of this United and they, they Let's just say they, they fed me a, a bunch of bull on how they were going to take care of me. Now, consequently, in the meantime, I'm not sure who they're taking care of. And, and the interest I have is to be annexed and to, uh, I guess, support Elkton, which I think I've talked to most people about this. So I bring you an agreement that, that United Water has, has said to me that uh, they, they want to stay on the Delaware line. They want to they wanna bring water to me under 95. They, they want to bring it to Dixie Line Road, and then they want to bring it on <clears throat> to my property. Now, what that all means is, is that <clears throat> my thinking was always that, that, that I would continue that line out to Muddy Lane and turn this contract over to the Elkton town and then the Elkton would, would control uh, the water from United. Now, that's in here that, that I can do that. Now, what I was thinking about was that first I think I read a letter 
read something that um, Blue had written or something to Artesian requesting 200,000 more gallons of water than Timmy Ridge needed, and that was in order to do some more annexations. Well, last week I went back to United and said, is that a problem? Um, they assured me that another 200,000 gallons was not a problem. And what I like about their agreement is, is all the thing that they're interested in at this point is selling bulk water. They're not interested in taking over control. They're not interested in taking territories. They're not interested in anything except selling bulk water. So, in the process of doing that, I followed up by finding out what bulk water meant to the town and to me. And, and I don't know, I think the town's rate is four something, a thousand. I, I don't know the number, but I think it's something like that. Well, consequently, I think uh, Artesians is, I think it might be a little bit more than even the towns are very close to it, so there's nothing to be made here except serving water. Now, bulk rate from United, for, for, for lease for me, is coming in at two seventy a thousand. Now, <clears throat> now that to me provides the town with the capabilities of selling, redirecting the selling of the water to to all these communities, and but also controlling the area that they annex. And then somebody else said to me, "Well, well, you know, I have an agreement with the county." Now this is Artesian speaking. I have an agreement with, with the county that says this will be my territory. My, my response to that is, is I, I don't believe that there's anything that says that if the town of Elkton annexes a piece of property into the town, that, that it has to abide by what the county works out with Artesian. So you could throw that kind of theory out. And yes, you could, that's not correct. Okay. Our agreement with Artesian is not to usurp their franchise. So we, we, under our interconnect agreement, we have to honor the franchise granted to them by the county. Like in Bell, El, Bell Hill LLC, we have to okay. allow them to serve that. Okay, you have to allow them to serve that. Right. They okay. put that in their agreement with the town. That if they have a franchise, All right. they annex it. We have to honor that. We okay. Well, that's you know again you know I, I'm only going to speak from my heart, not necessarily blaming anybody, but I, I consider that first agreement with Artesian not a very good agreement. Um, I wouldn't have agreed to any of those terms, but that's you know I didn't I didn't have anything to do with this and. I don't really, it doesn't matter, I just, in my opinion, again, and that's all it is, is that the town ought to be able to do better than what I'm being told that Artesian is negotiating over. Now, whether that's acceptable or not doesn't really affect, if you could figure it out, it doesn't affect Tembe Ridge at all, but it does affect what happens in this community on how this water gets supplied. So you can, you can take uh, that and I'll, I'll be more than willing to uh, leave this agreement here and they can make copies, everybody can read it. It is very similar to Artesians. I pay for, I pay a certain amount to bring the water into Timby Ridge. I pay to bring it through Timby Ridge and so on. Now Artesian has said same thing to me, bring it here, um, you know, you'll bring it to here, but they're bringing the meter inside of Elkton. Now, that control starts at that meter in the town of Elkton, where United Waters meter starts in the state of Delaware, and they have, they don't, no control, no ownership of anything beyond that meter. So, that's just the facts. So. Um, people can read this and take it for what it's worth. But while I was here, uh, I also thought that it was a, about time that, uh, that maybe I speak um, 
probably for for several people that are residents or either builders or developers in the town of Elkton. Um, I don't really have any complaints that I haven't already discussed with people and those complaints have been uh, somewhat resolved and we'll follow through with this stuff and make sure that everybody can agree to certain things and we can get things done. But I, I, had, a, I had a meeting last night with the county and and I kind of express my opinions there. Um, my opinions is that, that the housing industry is, is getting, there's too much control over the housing industry. Um, every year, everybody and their brother makes new rules for the housing industry. This happens constantly. From code changes to energy code codes to land developments to building um, to soil and erosion, to whatever. Every year we get, and even the electrical board changes their codes every so often, and, and the numbers are becoming so ridiculous that <clears throat> we're going to have a hard time in this county of selling houses if we don't kind of break down the housing industry and start saying everything is not just great to, to put it into it because everybody better start realizing that if I put anything in a house because you require it, obviously I'm in this business to make some money, not that it's happening right now, but I am in this business to do it, and, and it gets passed on to the customer. Uh, every every oversized water line, every every uh, uh, park, every piece of sidewalk that goes for miles, widening of roads, uh, seven inch of blacktop on the roads. Uh, you know, it's almost like you're running on I-95. You know, all these codes are becoming so encumbered with money that at this point, I figured up the other day, thirty percent of what I caused me to build a house is unnecessary. 30% of my house cost is unnecessary. Now, <clears throat> we also gotta, re we gotta remember that this is a bad economy, and, and I'll give you some small examples of what I'm talking about. For, for instance, let's take a little simple thing like the energy code. Now, <clears throat> we had people sitting over and in the office here somewhere and just said we will adopt the whatever the 2009 code it could be the 2008 I don't I can't even keep up anymore but we will do this now I do know that or at least I'm pretty sure that I know that everything is not mandated by the federal government or the state government to to live up to each code change you're not mandated to do it and not all places mandate that you do it because I'll give you an example which I checked out. We are under the 2008 uh, electrical code. We, Baltimore County, is operating under the 1996 electrical code. Hmm. <clears throat> now, in those seven or eight or ten years, we cost us just in the electrical business it cost us about forty five hundred dollars more than it costs to build an electrical house in Baltimore County and it's all because of codes now small examples I got a call the other day and said oh I forgot to tell you this but we have adopted the new energy code well New energy code, I pretty much met everything anyway, but I was told that 50% of your light bulbs now have to be energy saving. Now I thought to myself, that, that don't really make a whole lot of sense, but so I'll send, now this is already a done job, so I sent somebody up to Home Depot to get energy saving bulbs, and I paid three times what a regular bulb costs. Come back, put them in. And then, then I got to thinking, I said, I think I need to talk to the town of Elkton because 
I, I believe we need to, uh, I believe an ordinance or adopting a code is a law. I, I believe that's a law. So I need to talk to the town of Elkin because we need to hire two light bulb policemen. Because as soon as I leave that house, how many people are going to put uh, energy saving light bulbs in there? I mean, tell me the truth. How many people are going to do it? Um, now, but if you knock on the door every three months and, and ask to take the covers off the light bulbs, possible, you know. But nobody's going to go and nobody thinks about this kind of stuff. It's just, let's just adopt it. And every time you adopt a code, you are dealing with special interest groups. Every one of these code changes is due to special interest groups. Every time the soil and erosion plan gets changed or, or Tim Whitty wants to change the counties beyond the states, it's all due to people that want more settlement erosion, they want less building. You know, and that's the whole story of it. If you want to sell energy light bulbs, you lobby to get a law passed that says you must put 50% of them in now. All of a sudden, you're, you're just selling bulbs. Go to sprinkler systems. Um, I'm the first guy to tell you that um, in, in, um, 15 years ago, I put the first sprinkler system in a single family home voluntarily in Elkton. It's in Washington Woods. Okay? And, and I told the county this last night. So they, what it all boils down to is that was a model house. I never sold one of them with a sprinkler system. I offered it as an option. Not one of them was bought. And what did occur is I sold the house with the sprinkler system in it for the same price as I sold all the other houses without them because that's what I needed to do to sell it. Then I had to deal with a customer saying, oh, cosmetically, that doesn't look too good. <laughs> all them sprinkler heads hanging out of the ceiling and all, I, you know, what's my, my guest going to think? And, you know, and is this going to break? And is this going to freeze up? And, you know, my answer was, I don't know, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's volunteer and here it is. So, you know, it, it, you cannot just be passing all these codes and, and demolishing the industry of housing. It's the number one way to recover it. And if everybody thinks that I make millions of dollars they need to check my checking account. They, they need to come and live with me. They need to figure out how many hours I put in. And yes, do I make a living? Yes. But I'm not this rich guy that can just keep affording to pay for everything that everybody wants. And I also spoke last night, for, not for me as sprinklers, I spoke for the 50 people that might buy a house in Cecil County next year because of the county, uh, of, because of the economy, and the thousand people that might come from BRAC and buy something. That's a thousand and fifty people I spoke for that said they don't even know this is occurring. They have no idea they're coming to energy light saving. They don't have any idea that they're 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 going to get this and get that, but they're paying for it and. Pretty soon you sit there and you say, well, man, I can't, leave, I can't live in Cecil County. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you want facts and figures, I should build everything that I touch in Delaware. It's probably 15 to 20 percent cheaper to build in Delaware between taxes, between guidelines and rules. Um, it's just you Nobody realizes, I don't think anybody realizes, and maybe this board will, that at some point we got to stop and we got to back up a little bit and, and we got to cut cost in any budget that you have. You've got to cut cost and you don't do it by murdering people. I agree. You don't do it by doing anything that's going to, but there are ways to just put things on hold. 
until you can get things moving at a reasonable price that everybody can afford. And, and you know, I'm going to say something pretty dumb, and, and it is dumb in my opinion, to even ask somebody to do this. But with, if, I go to, if I go to Delaware, I pay $3,500 hookup fee. $3,500. My question to the board right now is, could, till the economy changes, can we, can we drop the uh, sewer and water hook up to 7,500? Can we? I mean, I don't know. Um, it just makes things more competitive to match up with, with Delaware or whatever. Uh, but, but it's not something I'm walking out of here really asking you to do. I'm saying consider things that allow some people to make a living and believe me, in these last four years, I have financed to the hilt to try to keep this town in a condition that, that it's working. People are getting jobs and they're working for me. And it goes right on down from the real estate to the lawyer, to the heating contractor, to the guy that sweeps up the streets, whatever it might be. Now, <clears throat> that's my problem. I've decided to do that, but I've employed people. But I've also decided that at my age, and I'm, I'm not really going to tell you what it is, but it, at my age, I, I'm th I think I'm a little bit fed up with, with being singled out. And I don't mean me alone, but I'm getting fed up with being singled out that this industry can be beat up so badly, so badly, um, you know, we can, we can go, I can go with so many examples of, of where we just get taken to the barn every night and somebody beats us over the head and said, would you like some more tomorrow? <clears throat> because that's what, what I hear every day from banking to, to bureaucrats, and I call them bureaucrats because they're the ones that make the rules, and from people that, that work for certain people, and I'm going to say, um, you know, like employees. My, my employees are taught that a customer is a customer, and you become very polite to them, and if, you're, if you can't do it, then you bring that customer to me, and I'll be polite. Um, sometimes in certain areas of working in towns, that is not possible. I think I'm the most hated person in the world when I walk away from a conversation because, you know, it's just like some people just decide that I'm the villain, I need to be punished, and they're going to do it. And, and, and I'm sick and tired of, of being punched around, and I, I think it's about time that the town of Elkton leads this county in, in the way that we're handled. Um, you know, I, I, I can't understand some people's attitudes. Um, I'll give you a small, and I've used names, so I'm going to use a name again because I'm not afraid of mentioning it. There's a guy in public works in the county, his name is Van Funk, and I call him Little Napoleon. Um, now, <clears throat> why do I do that? Because he, he sends me a letter last week. He says two things to me. Uh, you... Okay. Can I ask you a question? Sure. How come we're, not, we're talking county and then you get to the town? I think people here are probably interested in the town. Well, I think that instead of... Uh, I'd rather not mention names here. Because <laughs> I could, but I'd prefer not to do that. So. Well, no. can I, can, if you guys don't want to hear this, just tell me. Well, oh, yeah, I think we've heard quite a bit, and you've, you've been kind of fighting and lighting us a little bit, Kenny. And, uh, Thank you. We certainly can look into all those things and um, see what we can do. And, okay. I mean, no harm in doing that, and we certainly do appreciate you letting us know all your okay. feelings. So. Well, I, I appreciate uh, being able to speak to all of you, and, and you know, I... I hope that, um, you know, I hope that somebody can 
recognize or really go back and examine things and and just see uh, where all the you know what I'm saying is true or lie. I mean, you know, I don't I don't think I would lie to anybody, so I got to try, you know. And I'm at. Uh, yeah, we all know too that the where the housing market is and it's uh, really bad and certainly believe that you're at least trying up there and trying to do something there and uh, certainly that you really took the effort to do that yep. because the building as we all know is in the kind of in the dumps right now and it's pretty hard for anybody to even take that opportunity or to take that chance to even put the money out to try to get a development going at this time you know well so. mayor i appreciate that and and you know, I I um, I don't really want to do anything, and I, I give you examples, and you know, I don't I'm not interested in chopping heads here. I'm not interested in that. I didn't really mean to to give somebody else's name. I done that be, basically because it comes into effect with everybody's attitude, and and I believe that, uh, like I said, we ought to have a change of attitude. You know, I, w I would really honor somebody or respect somebody if all I heard was, how are you doing? How's things going? How can I help you? They, they go a long way with me, and that's I guess that's why I go home every night, because when I get home, that's what I hear. I don't hear all this garbage about how I'm going to get you today. I mean, nobody has to say something. All they got to do is show you. And, and, and it's out there, and um, I would appreciate it if you guys would look into this. Well, we, you know, we did have a discussion about that some time ago at the okay. last workshop, and uh, we're, we've are we been working on it. Okay, and, and we'll change. my main, you know, my main so. concern here for the town was, is to bring you this United Water Agreement. You read it over. I will be here on whatever day that I've been invited. Next, next Wednesday we have next a workshop. Next Wednesday, yeah. and... Uh, I will leave this with you, and, and maybe it will give you a little more insight on what you can say. Okay, we appreciate that. Okay, so, so we'll I'll leave it with, with Michelle. Michelle, we'll get copies and look at it. Right, okay. So we'll have well, a meeting. I really appreciate speaking, and, and, and sometimes I go a little too deep, too far, um, but, you know, it's, it's just the way I am. Well, it's the first time we heard from you, so we let you go ahead and speak. So it's good to hear what you got to say. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Becky. Not on set. You heard me. I didn't stutter. I'm not going to sit down. Okay. I have a better standing. I feel better. Okay, first of all, I want to thank y'all. I want to thank Mr. Piner very, very much for caring about the Veterans Administration, that Veterans Day. Uh, um, he was there. He took the place of everybody. He did a very beautiful job, a very good job. And American Legion was very proud of him. We are very proud of you. And we have a reward coming for you. And uh, um, you deserve it. And uh, if we'd have had this done uh, many, many years ago, this man went out of his way and got his own equipment so we could hear what was being said and the music and things that was being played. Otherwise, we wouldn't have had anything if it hadn't been for Mr. Piner. We would not have had one thing. I don't know who the officer was standing down at the red light. You don't care. But I would like to thank him very much for standing down there and directing traffic. He was a very nice officer. He just had his head, but it doesn't matter. Very polite very caring and very understanding. We have very few of them in the town of Buffalo that cares about seniors or anybody. My suggestion is that we have done a lot with the children, Mary Jo, myself, the JCs, Roger Owens. Why, why is it you're the mayor? God forbid us. 
but yard. Why is it you don't want anything in this town for the children? When we had the, bar, the uh, uh, town committee, are you going to stop the bar companies from coming down there and parking and doing their things that they do? I don't really think so, Joe. I don't think you can do that. And I know you won't. I say not. And I've got enough to back me up that says you won't. I don't need Elfton to tell me they will because of Elfton Police Department and I don't get along. Never will and never do. They don't do anything for me. They never will. They could care if I got killed. They wouldn't care. Now, again, what are we going to do about this? Are you going to stop us? You stop children from having the 